So in terms of states' rights as it exists in the United States, there's two purposes of it. One is pertinent to the various uh, video blog series that I'm doing because it appertains to debt. I use the anti-Garden of Eden metaphor because there was no, uh, there was never any sort of pristine state uh, to anything, particularly U.S. debt. Uh, what happened was the United States, uh, after the Constitution was ratified, came to the realization that there was no conceivable way that the federal government could assume all of the debts of the various states. However, under the Constitution, the government had to uh, honor the debts that accrued by virtue of the Confederacy as it appertained to the war with Britain, the War of Independence. And it was a considerable debt. Uh, when this was announced by the federal government, the states panicked uh, and uh, were, were essentially afraid of having what we now see in Greece. So this gave rise to the 11th Amendment because they were afraid that um, uh, the various creditors uh, would sue the state that they would try to essentially do a run on the state, the same as people do on a bank. The other aspect of uh, uh, states' rights is, of course, to control people, primarily uh, as it began to preserve slavery. Uh, and then this became, th this turned into this idea of um, controlling people because you know it's 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 easier to purchase majorities at a state level and even lower levels like at a local level for instance uh, so um, part of this fragmentation of community uh, comes from this idea of uh, states' rights breaking things down uh, to the smallest possible unit. And what came to be decided upon as a conservative cause was the family unit. So essentially, community at whatever level it existed upon was fragmented, and the result were these traditional family value units. And from that point, it was easier to control what these various people in these units demanded. The women were excluded altogether. Uh, men under 21 were excluded. Blacks were excluded. You had to be a white male, 21 years or older. Uh, at the time of the first Congress. Um, so, from all of this, we see the sense of fear. Uh, and in terms of police brutality, one of the things that uh, conservative society has always been terrified of are assemblies, any sorts of assemblies. You could find in the common law prior to the First Amendment you had provisions in law which forbade assemblies of uh, persons greater than 12 in number, uh, which is kind of ironic uh, when you think in terms of corporations. Uh, I am not an anti-corporation person, like in the other blogs, and I think that that whole thing is uh, a big mistake. But that's for another that's another topic from this. But when you combine all of these various things together, uh, particularly in terms of um, the rise of manufacturing and immigration, the end of slavery, uh, you see a situation where 
people are huddled together as a family unit uh, and then all of these various things are imposed upon them, how they're supposed to behave, uh, how the husband is supposed to act, how the wife's supposed to act, how they're supposed to raise their children, and so on and so forth. And this, is be this has been an imposition, uh, and it's become, in the conservative sense, an imposition of party, and now they want to go to the next step, which, which is to use government to impose these standards on the individual. Uh, so in terms of them giving, get, trying to get government off your back, it's what they're talking about is getting government off businesses' back. They're not trying to get government off your back as an individual, not at all. So, you know, you have these various things. Well, you have to have more police officers. You have to have a military, you have to have um, uh, nuclear weapons, uh, all, all sorts of weaponry uh, to protect your family. You know, the homosexuals are after your children, um, the, the Negroes are after your white women, um, everybody, the, the Jews are after your money, the Muslims, all they want to do is make wars, so, so there's this constant imposition of fear and terror upon individuals. And from this group of uh, fragmented, um, the, the, these, these family units uh, are drawn police officers, soldiers, that all have these, these, this sense of fear instilled in them, imposed upon them in regards to assemblies. We have to conform, we have to obey. We obey, we have a family. I got to own a wife, uh, you know, she, she gave me my children, uh, you know, uh, I got a house, so you have to do that too, and if you don't, I'm going to beat you. And whether this thing is in the front of these people's mind or whether it's in the back of their mind somewhere, it causes people to, to do these sorts of acts that you see uh, on these people, the Occupy Wall Street people. The other thing that this uh, fragmentation resulted in was a competition amongst individuals for access to the earth for the purpose of sustenance. And this is one of the things that the, the founding fathers uh, all wanted to avoid were the, the, the mistakes and errors committed by other societies and other governments and people. And one of the things that was repeated, of course, was the acquisition of property to the point of monopoly by a certain group of individuals. At one time, what is represented now is the 1%. And for all I know, it might still be but the mix is a little bit different of what it was back then. But the idea is the same. So you have a, a sort of leisure class like you had in the South with the slave mongers. Uh, and then you have this middle class of managers uh, that work as servants for the ruling class. And then all the rest of the people are groveling, uh, fighting tooth and nail amongst each other competing with each other, uh, you know, to get this little piece of the earth that they could have access to in order for sustenance. And this has taken, assumed various different forms, uh, whether it's the, you know, the acquisition of property for the purpose of a family farm or for manufacturing or whatever. Uh, it, it produces money to some degree, which allows people to, to acquire the things that they need as the basic necessities of life. But uh, this, this is what this fragmentation does, and these are the various um, uh, bad qualities of it that we, pres we presently suffer from and what has to be changed.